step into the world of the Super Pro Podcast, where we lay out the blueprints of home service excellence. Join us as we break down the wins and struggles of pros who are at the top of their game. Put their wisdom into practice as you build your company's success. All right, welcome to another edition of the Super Pro Podcast, the heartbeat of home service excellence. I'm Roland Leitenberg, your host and co-founder of House Call Pro, and I'm an advocate for hardworking pros just like yourselves that help make our homes better, safer, and more comfortable. Through House Call Pro, I've had the privilege of supporting hundreds of thousands of pros just like you, empowering you all to achieve more, stress less, and redefine success in our industry. Today, I'm super excited to have our guest, Sarah Anderson, on the call with us. She's one of the co-owners of Drain Daddy, and they're based out in Omaha, Nebraska. And they're a fairly new company. Uh, their goal is to hit 250K this year with a couple trucks on the road. So I'm excited here to dive into Sarah's journey and some of the challenges she's overcame and get some, some tips uh, and tricks out of her, um, some golden nuggets of some of the early days. So thanks for coming on Of course, on the thanks today. for having me. Oh, uh, great. So tell me, uh, you guys started Drain Daddy uh, during the pandemic. We years. did. So we established uh, January 2020 and uh, started servicing mm-hmm. April 2020. So right after COVID hit, um, thankfully, it didn't have a huge impact. And it actually helped since people are at home and we're in plumbing and the plumbing was being used a lot. Uh, but yeah, so we started so far so good. Uh, as any normal business started off super slow, but we were looking for the right tools to, to make us look legitimate, make us look professional, uh, learn as we go. And we ran into house call pro about 10 months in. Oh, wow. That's great. So, so right out of the gate, um, what, what gave you guys the confidence to kind of make that step and start your own business? What were you doing before Drain Daddy? What was your husband doing before so, Drain Daddy? So um, my husband was a maintenance technician for a lot of uh, residential and commercial properties doing plumbing, but all sorts of handy uh, jobs. And I was in customer service at PayPal. And um, we just kind of hit this point where we were ready to take the next step, wanted to make more money, uh, ultimately wanted more freedom in terms of scheduling. And uh, we just pulled the plug and went and saw an attorney one day after we had figured out a name. And that that's what we did. That's the first step we made into starting the business. How'd you guys come up with the name Drain Daddy? Yeah, I came up with it. I did. I did have some inspiration. I was looking up a lot of different names, but ultimately that one stuck. And um, after researching, I did find a couple of others, but I did not find them first. I, I really thought it was catchy. I was like, as long as we have the branding, people won't think this, you know, is a joke. <laughs> but it, people love the name and they call in all the time and are laughing about it. And it's, it gets a laugh out of people. So, But they remember who we are. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things is just establishing a really good brand, a really good image and just being super memorable. So that way, if someone ever has a problem and they call their friend up, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember this company, Drain Daddy. And it's like, it's catchy and it's like, it's easy to like, just think about. And you guys really nailed that. Thanks so much. It's it's definitely different from the kind of other business names you hear. I think it's more modernized, you know. It is. It is. And all of your branding is super modern, really clean. Um, not too much going on. It's it's very like on point. Um, how how do you think about that brand and that image? And how did you come up with that? And how did you build your website? Did did you do all of yes, that? Yes, I'm completely that? behind why everything looks the way it does. I wanted a clean look. The last thing I put myself in the consumer position. The last thing I thought uh, people wanted to see was the actual work itself. I mean, it's dirty. It's sewage and nasty broken pipes and all sorts of stuff roots nobody wants to see that they want to know what it's going to be when it's done (laughs) um or how it was before uh so i focused on that um and i saw a lot of websites that do use a lot of um what i'd say are just not very good marketing photos and so i wanted to focus on blue that's the color of water white clean the vans that we have are the same way and i rolled with it and i think that it it makes us look really well really good uh, I really like the golden nugget that you just dropped there and you did it so casually because I think it's just like built into who you are and as a business, but it's like, 
I went through like, I want, what does a customer want to experience? You know, like what does a customer want to see? And sometimes a, a lot of people, especially when they're getting started, they're not, they're not putting themselves mm-hmm. in their homeowner shoes or their customer shoes. And, and you started with that just out of the gate. And then the second piece that you dropped, which is like, show the things afterwards. I think you're right. A lot of people show like, look how bad it is. Look how bad it is. And if someone's looking for a service provider, showing them like, oh, look what it looks like afterwards. It's nice. It's clean. I like how you mentioned like blue, like water. And it's just all of that flows through. And it's, um, I think it's often overlooked. I remember uh, just now when we were talking right before the show, um, even when you guys were smaller, you had people calling in saying, oh yeah, I see you guys (laughs) everywhere. Um, And, um, and that goes because you've got, you know, really good branding Mm -hmm. behind it. Uh, Tell me about your website. Did you build that yourself? Did you have an agency help you? Like, how'd you get it looking? I had an agency build it, but it was all off my input and my content for the most part. Uh, You know, Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect when I first saw it, but I was so happy. It's the best website we've ever had. We've had a few, uh, and they've gone, they've improved in, uh, in all ways since we've started, I think we've gotten a new one almost every year. Uh, and we've ch- changed for a multitude of reasons, but I wanted to show our accomplishments. I want it to be clean. I want people to be able to call and book really at any point. I mean, the less clicks, the better they need to be able to contact us in one click. That's so important and mm-hmm. easily see our services. And this doesn't go for all pros, but our pricing being on our website, our flat rate pricing is so, so important uh, to be up front so that people can book right away. That's what. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people are really scared because, you know, when they feel like they put their prices online, they don't have the time to like, you know, tell them why it is the price that it is and explain the value that they bring behind the price without showing it. And a lot of people are like, well, I'm only going to show up on site before I give a price. You guys do the opposite, which is like, no, here's our website, super clean, it's nice. We put all the prices here, so it's like fair pricing on a service. Like it's very clear what you guys have going on. And then the same too with the online booking, you build the pricing and the pictures like into that. So that whole like that whole arc you've done is just really good, really clean. And I believe, you know, especially for a service like yourself, you know, obviously there's gonna be times when you're getting into the stuff where the price might sure. be more or different. But it seems like you've got a lot of your basic services just outlined because they're usually going to fall in some kind of, you know, some kind of range worth of time. And you've done a really good job. I appreciate that. It's a lot. And thanks to to you guys. I mean, you guys are the back end tools. So that's been crucial. Really important. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, when it comes to like putting your pricing out there, how did you guys think about that? Did you ask your husband like, hey, how much do you want to price this? Or did you call a bunch of competitors and ask for their pricing and then you you based off of there? Or did you like, all of the above? Do that? Um, I first called all of our competitors, got general pricing. A lot of them wouldn't even give it out over the phone. So that's another advantage is you don't see pricing online. You don't see online booking online, rarely for plumbing in general, let alone just drain cleaning. And then um, mm-hmm. we started from a hourly to flat, now we're flat rate. So hourly was the first couple of years. And even though that was online, we disclosed, you know, the hourly rates and whatnot. And then um, mm-hmm. through your guys's conquer training that I started and did a few rounds of, uh, I learned how to uh, put together our cost to operate. And that's what uh, opened my eyes to the flat rate pricing and, and that if we can make that just get baselines that are making us more than even the hourly was making, but to the customer, it appears somewhat reasonable, then we're still winning. And that's, that's mm-hmm. what we've done so far. Yeah. I, I, I love when this, the concept of flat rate pricing, which is like thinking and figuring out what it takes to run your entire business and then understanding what you need to bill out at any given moment mm-hmm. to be able to make a profit. And you're kind of backing into those numbers. And that's definitely something on the Conquer Coaching. We try to make sure that our pros know because as a consumer, it's way easier to just like buy something. We're like, okay, this is the price. And then I'm going to do it. And it makes that purchasing decision so much easier. And you guys have really done well um, at doing that. And I think for other pros that are listening too, you know, when you're putting things out online, put some thought behind it. 
but don't be afraid of putting your prices out there because I think you'll probably attract more people. Just like Sarah said, like she called a whole bunch of other companies that are like, yeah, we can't give you a price. We need to get out there. We need to get out there. Uh, versus you could have had the booking if you had the price there and you have a millennial uh, like myself that's just like, oh, click, click, book, schedule, done. I'm not calling anybody else. I agree. That's it. So um, now that you're growing a little bit, um, you mentioned you've, you've got a couple employees. Uh, but w- what's been kind of your, your your strategy there, or maybe even lack of strategy um, and, and and luck? Like, how's that? How's that? So it's worked out guys? very well. I've gotten very fortunate, and our employees uh, we found over Nextdoor, which uh, in the beginning of business, mm-hmm. and even now, I'm still recommending our business when I see people asking for clogged drains and whatnot. Uh, but the employee that we have full time right now he was looking for plumbing work and was working for one of our competitors. And I reached out to him seeing if he'd be interested. And that opened the conversation to a couple of interviews. And he's an amazing employee that we did not find the traditional way, but it's worked out so far. And um, that's kind of how we're, we've looked at it, but I just got lucky. (laughs) Yeah. No, I think luck definitely sometimes plays plays a key factor in it, especially in the early days too. You know, when those first key employees, you know, you might find them in mm-hmm. non-traditional ways. So if you're feeling frustrated with you know doing a standard Indeed post or like a Craigslist post, you know, maybe try you know asking on some of your social networks or a friend of a friend um, or even competitors. You know, there's there's lots of ways to kind of do that targeting. I think um, that's definitely a good thing to uh, keep in mind as, as you're starting your business. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you think about from like a presentation standpoint. When you guys get out there, uh, you get into in front of a customer's home, um, you know, your, your presentation leads to really good reviews. But kind of like walk me through that process and what's kind of the magic behind what you, you mean in do. terms of just the quality or the customer service experience? Yeah, like the full the full customer journey. Like how does it how does it start? We, we talked a little bit about like the website, mm-hmm. the online booking, but like. How does it go? How does it go from there usually? So yes, the first uh, step is making sure they can reach us easily. Like we discussed through online booking, uh, being able to call us right away. Uh, I right now take all of our dispatch. Uh, it gives people a lot of uh, assurance that I'm local, know the area. I really try to be as not casual, but professional, but a human about it. And I close probably 90% of our calls uh, the rest are, would say, our online booking. Wow. And then we enclose. My husband really sets the standard probably too high, but it's, <laughs> you know, he's the ideal of what we want our employees to be, which are um, looking, looking, appearing nice, you know, having the com- company logo, having the, the van. And uh, we like how we can send the text with the technician picture. That is, we've got multiple comments on that. So they know exactly who's coming out. And then in terms of service, we always want to be completely transparent with pricing. And if in honesty, we are not here to upsell and cross sell. I mean, I know that is part of business, but we really don't recommend it unless it's needed. And that's where a lot of our reviews have gotten Mm -hmm. honesty and trustworthy. uh, And that sets apart, sets us apart from a lot of our competition uh, that are, that are upselling maybe excessively. (laughs) And, uh, then the yeah. last thing I would say is we don't leave a mess. Plumbers can be known to be pretty messy <laughs> and we make sure we leave it clean, if not cleaner than what it is when we went there to ultimately close off that whole experience. And then, sorry, lastly is uh, the payment methods, being able to send them, being, being able to be paperless saves us money. It's faster. Uh, we can also take in-person credit card transactions, but we want to obviously get the money as yep. soon as possible and make it as easy for the customer. And so the billing is very easy and simplified. Yeah. And what do you, what do you feel like if you had a guess, like what percentage of customers pay like cash or check and what percent pays like credit card? And do you do any of the financing or we do offer it? I don't two? think we've done many customers have chose, chose that option. I would say about 90% pay credit debit card or that used app. Okay. Yeah, it's wow. huge, uh, but we it has to be offered. Yeah. It's it's way too convenient to not. I understand why some businesses don't, but it it it's yeah, majority credit yeah. debit card. 
Yeah, I think, you know, it goes back to what you said in the beginning of the interview here, which is just like the consumer and homeowner expectation and like, you know, looking at it through their eyes. And I expect to be able to pay by credit card. And, uh, you know, I want those points. And if, you know, I get an invoice and I can just like double click and then do my, you know, mm-hmm. do my little Apple Pay and boom, it's done. Me- makes it so much, so much easier than like having to go dig out the checkbook or make sure I have enough cash on the hand, which I never do. I don't like, care any cash I don't ever. <laughs> um, probably. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so that, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, and being able to offer that too, I think, um, just helps too in the collection process. So you don't have to deal with trying to like chase down checks and all that 100%. kind of stuff and then deposits to the bank. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think once you figure out your pricing, like you guys have, you build everything into your pricing, just like your gas, just like your insurance, just like all the other things that you have to pay for. It's all bundled in mm-hmm. that flat rate price. So um, ultimately the customer pays for it anyways. Exactly. So tell me, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, you guys have a ton of reviews out there that are like really spectacular. If you read through some of them, um, what's, what's your strategy? How are you getting so many reviews? You're, you've only been in business for a couple of years. So what's kind of your strategy here? Cause you're already kind of like taking uh, you know, taking a lead in front of the pack. With some the of strategy competitors. is to make it simple for them to leave a review as quickly as possible after servicing was done. So at first, before we started using house call, we had, you know, little cards that had QR codes on them and that's great. You know, that's something, but that's another step that then they have to take. And if it's an older client, the chances of them doing that are very little <laughs> and, or someone that's not tech savvy, even if they had a great experience, they're not going to take those steps. So uh, right now we utilize the text feature that texts the Google review link right away uh, when the technician checks out. And I absolutely love that. We get so many reviews from it It's in house with you guys and it's just to the point, it's been the most important feature that we've had. That's how my husband built all the review, like at least 150 of the reviews himself. And then the rest have been through, you know, him and help. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys are what, like 270. You're going to approach 300 in less than three years. Um, and it's a perfect five star. So you guys are clearly dominating um, and doing really well at that. I think for a lot of younger businesses and just getting started, you know, the sooner you can get starting to build those reviews, the better, because that just compounds over time that builds your lead in front of other people. And every single job you do is a chance to ask for that review. And why not do it automatically? Um, that just helps, um, especially as you're hiring and maybe not everyone's asking for it um, after after every job. Uh, so now that you've been in business for for wow, four years or so, almost five, going on five, um, you know, what, what tips would you give like young Sarah, like, you know, getting into the business, uh, man, four years ago, if you would have only known like this or that, like, what are, what are some kind of obstacles or some golden nuggets you, you have? I would here? say, uh, to have a lot of patience and grace for yourself because when you start, you know, these, a lot of businesses don't make money for a couple years. You're going to be usually strapped for cash and that affects not just your work life, but your personal life. (laughs) And I really, truly think that's why a lot of businesses fail is just not having the patience to wait out those hard years. Um, But I've constantly uh, been looking on ways to make our brand more credible and legitimate the whole time, better websites, uh, making sure our text reminders or email uh, free forms are correctly formatted to make us sound as professional as possible, yet a friendly, nice company. Um, I don't know if I would ch- change much of what I did because I'm really happy about what we've done thus far. But the patience thing is key, having patience with yourself and realizing yeah. it's going to take time. But as long as you're seeing progress uh, you know, with the service financially, even if it's little progress, you're doing the right thing and you'll get there. Yeah. I, I love that. Just that, that tip that you shared, which is just like have patience with yourself because you're going to expect mm-hmm. everything to just like happen overnight. And you see all these like, success stories left and right. And no one ever sees like all the long time and all the, just the hard work that goes underneath the cover to, to get to this, to that status. But I think, um, especially in the early days, you have such high expectations. And if you just take it easy, if you're doing the right thing, like things are going to start to build on itself. And I think, 
you know, you're seeing that with your business too, the amount of reviews that you have, the reputation that you have, you've got everything working really well. And now you're finally getting to the point where it's like, okay, how do we start adding a truck? And now you got two trucks and then the plan for the next year, maybe three trucks and you start to just build and build. Uh, but having that patience sometimes is really hard um, because I think in general, entrepreneurs don't have patience because you wouldn't be an entrepreneur either because you're biased for action. So they kind of like they conflict. And so that's definitely a really good test. Uh, what about, um, I'm curious, what's kind of your, your underrated house call pro feature? Like what's a feature that you think maybe not enough people know about or something that you wish you knew about earlier or something that you think doesn't get enough credit that it deserves and you can't talk, you can't say the uh, review. You got to think of it. For a while. Man. Um, okay. Uh, I would say the, can I say two? Uh, I would say the house yeah. call pro group is amazing. The Facebook group. Oh my gosh. I've gotten so many tips, learned so much, been able to help other people. Like just, uh, that's been so helpful talking with other pros connected with them outside of that group and able to ask them questions about pricing, uh, based on their areas and how they're doing Mm -hmm. it. That's underrated. I think, even though you guys are really good at telling people about it, maybe people don't utilize as much. Like that's a free network of hundreds, if not thousands of other companies that we're all trying to do the same thing here is in, and have successful businesses and you can learn how other companies do it and also um, share tips and help other people who are just getting started, which I like doing. I don't know if you're aware of that, but I, I help out a lot, especially with little things. I'm, I'm just good with technology. So I, I know the quirks of how this uh, platform works. <laughs> Totally. Totally. I think uh, that's one of the things in the community that I love seeing, which is like pros like yourself that use the software day to day and can come in and like help uh, because you're used to using the software. And, and if there are any workarounds that you're using or, or you know, you're, you're able to share those things. Um, and also your success. I remember when you shared your post, it was like, I think you first hit your first 100 reviews. And I was like, you know, you got a bunch of feedback on that and just seeing other pros share their successes, like really lifts you up and motivates you too, which I think is definitely underrated. And I think motivation sometimes, you know, after some hard, hard days or hard weeks or a hard month, you know, is, is really nice to, to, to see definitely. What too. What's, what's your, what's your other one? What's your, what's your second underrated? Yeah. Feature? The second underrated two. feature is the, uh, <sighs> Man, I'm stuck between a couple. Um, <laughs> you can share more. You can share more. I think these are like the tips, you know, like this is for people that are just starting out with House Call Pro, like, or maybe not, they've been using it forever and just don't know that something exists. Or yes, the, okay. So I would say the ability to communicate with the technicians and the customers directly through the app, like huge. And I'm mm-hmm. a lot of pros that I've talked to don't use it that much, like talking to customers via text, like we're in the digital era, like I'll save a phone call if I can. And I do it all the time with customers. I mean, you know, you have to, you have to put on a professional uh, front if you're going to be texting, you cannot, you know, it's not like texting your friends and stuff like that, but it saved me so much time, so many phone calls. And then we can also communicate with the texts which we haven't done a lot of, which is why I say it's underrated. But once I can get us doing that, when I have more technicians, it will be more helpful than trying to do everything through tech separately. Uh, We can just all use the app, but the customer interaction is huge. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, the nice thing is because everything's in-house called pro and it communicates out via text on the other side of it, but then you can keep it all in one platform and everybody can see different things. So you can have multiple people to be able to view the like communication with the homeowner, for example. So if you're talking to the homeowner and then your husband wants to see, like, oh, what did what did Sarah say you know, during dispatch or whatever, you can kind of see those communication streams like all in one space versus having to like screenshot a text, send it over. And then like, you know, there's that whole workflow. That yes, seems like lots of work and it's all in one place. Yeah. yeah. You just said the scenario, my husband sees everything and then I, he doesn't need to ask me. He sees it right there. So save time <laughs> yeah totally save that time don't need to duplicate work um what else you you had a, you have like more i'm just super yeah. curious i love i love hearing this kind of feedback on like these non-obvious the hcp like, assist tests. the we started using that only a couple months ago uh, i know it's somewhat new like within the year new uh that's mm-hmm. been really awesome to have in-house yep. that i can just turn on because i i'm working 
the majority of the year, but I take vacations and where I want to disconnect and I can easily have that turned on. And I've placed some calls myself. The reps do a good job. I like that they're directly connected to house call. So if people are looking to get into that, Mm -hmm. um, eventually to take time off if they need more phone reps or whatever, I would recommend it. It it did really help us out. And like I said, we don't use it a lot right now, but that's just because we don't need to. It's not because we don't like to, but that's kind of a a hidden feature. A lot of people are always asking about it. And yeah, I think like being able to take a break every once in a while, or even like after hours calls too. I know a bunch of plumbing companies too, where, you know, you can't choose when pipes break. And if something breaks or something's clogged, something's blocked, you know, like there's definitely after hours calls and people are calling around. And if, you know, they, they can't reach anybody, they're going to keep calling until they find someone that does pick up. And so I think that's definitely an underrated feature because people don't understand how much actually happens after hours. And as a small business owner, if you're the one that's always taking the phone calls, being able to just make sure that someone's answering that other end of, you know, the, the call. Uh, while you're not able to do it or don't want to, or you're on vacation or you're tired or whatever it is, that's really, really cool. Um, and I highly recommend people check that out. It's sometimes the easiest thing to forget about when you're a really small business because you feel like you have to take all the calls and you know you have to be connected and enslaved to your phone. And you know now that everything is in your House Call Pro app, you're just like, you always have it with you, but, um, but you don't have to. You, know, you can turn it off. You can make the switch and turn on House Call Pro Assist, So. Uh, I, I I like that you mentioned that because I don't think it's... it's yeah, if you're 24-7 plumbing, you need to have that on a hundred percent. Most important thing is the, the phones being answered. And then as a bonus, you should have online booking for them to book something. Even if you don't have your pricing out there, uh, just people need to be able to book with you or they're just going to call somebody else. So... Totally. And that's a good thing that you brought up, which is like for online booking... You know, we recommend people put pricing in there because usually the things in online booking are easy mm-hmm. to flat rate price or you should be putting things that are easy to be like e-commerce a la carte purchase. Um, but uh, you can also put things like just estimate request or service call or things that where you don't really have like an, a dollar figure. Like you can have blanks there um, and you can still collect the information because it feels way better to do that in a selected time than to like fill out a contact form. That's like, email me sometime and I don't know when they're ever going to email me. And I've never used one of those contact forms just because who knows like if I'm ever going to get an email back. Um, so yeah, definitely cover all your bases. That's a really good tip. Thanks. Cover all your bases. Uh, this has been super helpful. Sarah, is there anything else you uh, you want to share with, with the audience uh, or any, any other golden nuggets or anything else? I will just say that of? I recommend to all my friends and any family members or any just acquaintances that I meet that are trying to start small business, especially in the trades that House Call Pro has been. And I'm not just saying this because I'm on this call with you. I It's been so instrumental in making our business credible, legitimate, professional on the front and the back end. We are, my husband and I are obsessed with it. And uh, you guys are constantly rolling out new features to try to make more things in-house, which I like. And Mm -hmm. in order to be a successful business in the trades, you have to have a platform like this or you will not get get the reviews, get the credibility that you're looking for. And it's all in one. Uh, So I would just say to pull the plug and do it if you're serious about growing your business. Uh, that, that, that's, that always sounds so great. Thanks for sharing that. I think, um, you know, ultimately, you know, you guys have done a great job with just your brand and your professionalism and having something, um, to be able to keep track of that and just keep your appearance looking really professional is key to growing the way you guys have so far. And I'm super excited to continue watching you guys grow and thanks for engaging in the community and talking to pros and helping other pros. That's what that's all about. And, um, I'm really glad we had the chance to interview. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Take care. The Super Pro Podcast is brought to you by House Call Pro, the leading platform for the home service industry. House Call Pro streamlines your workflows and simplifies everything from scheduling and dispatching to communication and billing. Unlock the full potential of your home service business with House Call Pro. Work smarter and more efficiently with streamlined workflows and detailed analytics. Win more business and serve your customers well, every single time. Join more than 40,000 home service pros who have already revolutionized their businesses. 
work smarter with streamlined workflows, get organized with centralized information, and scale your business your way. Learn more at housecallpro.com.